Hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I'm delighted to be joined by Anne Bennett, who is literally just up the five in Orange County. How are you doing, Anne? Doing great, John. Thank you so much for having me today. Absolutely. And Anne it runs Renegade Branding, She's marketing expert, public speaker, author, branding for purpose-driven entrepreneurs and small businesses. And I'm really uh, excited to talk today about this uh, whole thing, liberate your rebel spirit and rake in the revenues. So what is Renegade Branding? That's a great question, John. Since I'm a <laughs> re renegade, I'm kind of like, well, how am I going to answer that question? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you're just uh, going to leave me hanging. <laughs> right, right. Renegade branding is really about how do you discover your wow factor or your what I call your fascination factor to your personality style. And then how much of that do you want to magnify and amplify in your business so that you get the attention that you actually deserve online and offline? Like, as you know, you know, there's, I don't know, maybe 3 billion now. Last time I looked, it was 2.5 billion websites and hundreds mm -hmm. of marketing messages come in your inbox every day. You know, I don't look at most of them. I don't know about you, but mostly it's like click, 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 click. And if I see a very catchy, very interesting subject title, I'll probably look at it. Okay. Exactly. Otherwise, yes. no. Or I look for my favorite people that I follow, and everybody else goes in a basket. Yeah. So, so when you when you work with people, I, I'm sure you get this all the time, where where people are like, yeah, yeah, I know I get all of this, but I'm just not that interesting a person myself. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, how can I build up a bra a brand that's interesting? Uh, because let's face it, me myself, I, I'm not that interesting. Right. I'm just another person. I'm just a yeah. regular guy or a regular gal. Like what could, what could be interesting about me? I find it, you know, as human beings, we are so crazy fascinated with each other. Even, even if you feel like, well, I'm not edgy or I'm not whatever, you know, and so this and this, and this, or John, so cool. And you so this and this, but the truth of it is that it's our 1%. We're actually, a lot the same as human beings. It's the 1%, what breaks your heart and what pisses you off that really sets you apart from someone else. So there's a lot of branders and, and like in your industry as well, there's a lot of you know pop going on, sales yep. pop here and there, but it, it's more about the connection, the human connection ultimately. And I know sales pop is all about the human connection yeah. to, you know, it's a system for it, but ultimately it's the human connection. And that's what Renegade Branding is about. It's about how do I instantly connect with another person in such a way that they find me interesting enough to find out deeply more something else. Yeah. And, and I would say it, it's interesting because of the period that we've been through with the pandemic and all of that. It's, and I think it was starting before anyway, that people were starting to crave a little bit more authenticity or real connection because we've been through this you know, hyper technical revolution where everything was being automated and all of that. And, uh, you know, people were kind of disappearing into the background. I think there's a real hunger for people to connect with authentic people. So, I guess part of what you're talking about is really bringing out that authentic person in your branding. Yeah. And it doesn't matter your personnel. It's really, I have these four, what I call our iconic personality styles that everybody falls into, which really helps people to see what does make them fascinating, mm -hmm. you know? So it's like, you can be a nurturer, a disruptor, an innovator, or a geek all of which have different characteristics and different things that they bring to the table, their superpowers, if you will, or the thing that they're very, very good at. And a lot of times my geeks, which are like my favorites, because mm -hmm. I'm creative and they're kind of all over the place. So someone who has got, they have a system, you know, they have a roadmap for results. Those are my people that I like to, 
And I was looking at sales pop about that too. It's like, there's a roadmap mm -hmm. to results. So, you know, no matter what, it's going to end up where you want it to go. Mm -hmm. Right. Cause you got a, this roadmap. All you're doing is following the roadmap. And, uh, you know, so people don't understand. They might think that's boring. Some people, you know, they're like, oh, it's kind of boring. But actually, for others, it's extremely exciting. Yeah, no, <laughs> like no, myself, it, I'm like, Ooh! <laughs> no, no, I, I, absolutely. And I think, uh, and I think that's uh, you know, you you hit on something there because I do think people. Uh, you know, they may put themselves in the wrong category, first of all, uh, or they may think that, you know, if you're a nurturer, you may think, well, how am I ever going to compete in this world of, you know, go-getters, of geeks, of people mm -hmm. who are like, you know, really in there. As a, as a nurturer, it, it's great when you get the chance to nurture, but it's getting that opportunity to nurture in the first place. So mm -hmm. how do you talk, to, how do you help people like that? I think, you know, it's, it's such a great question in terms of, I don't really help them. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I do. Okay, but, okay, okay. Next okay. question then. Uh, yeah. No, I do. Help. I'm just kidding. I'm horsing around because you know I'm a disruptor, so I'm kind of like yeah. Clearly, uh, clearly. But um, you know, each person like nurturers. I love my nurturers. Right? They just calm my nervous system. I love that. And so nurturers need to understand that they might not be the peacock in the room. Let's say or the, the more like the disruptor who's always trying to get attention by saying things that are kind of, you know, upsetting the status quo, that's their thing. The nurturers are like, they have this innate ability to make you feel like you already know them. So the connection is like, if it's women it's, or men, it's like, you're our, our BFF. We already mm -hmm. feel that way, even though we just met you. And men and women can share that characteristic. Like for men, it's like all of a sudden you're like, oh, I'm with somebody. I just feel so safe. I feel like they're my rock. This is just a great person for me to be with. And with women, it's like you feel like you just met your best girlfriend. Right. And that's the, that's the real connecting part where you fall into what you were touching upon, where you fall into a little trouble is when you think you're the nurturer when you're actually the disruptor and you wonder why that's not working. You know, you wonder why that's not quite happening the way they, because sometimes we can't see our own eyebrows, right? So we don't really sure. know. I have an assessment yeah. that I give to my, I just ran through a, I was at a big conference, a big event. I made this assessment for people like, well, this is what you're like. This is your, your pro how your product suite should go. This is how your presentation should look. This is, you know, who you actually are in all those categories, which really helps people to go, oh, yeah, they can see it. You know what I mean? They can just go, oh, yeah, that is me. How did you know that? <laughs> I love when they say that. How do you know me so well? <laughs> Yeah, or or the thing is, uh, or or sometimes, yeah, they don't even know themselves that well because I do think that uh, self awareness is such a is such a tough thing because sometimes we think that we're, as you said, we think that we're something else. We think that we're good at other things, and sometimes it takes, uh, you know, well, it takes a journey of self discovery. But sometimes it takes something like your assessment or whatever to start to question, oh, maybe I'm not what I think I am. Right, people. I just had somebody who. She wrote down she was a nurturer and she's actually an innovator. She didn't add, she only had one thing on the question that was nurturer. She had one <laughs> nurturer, she had like five innovator um, characteristics, if you will. And it was like, it's going to be fun to talk to her because A, she's a woman, she's probably a mom. You know, it's like we naturally, she's in a supportive, She's in a role where she serves other people. So she mm -hmm. just thinks she's a nurturer. And I'm like, right. yeah, that's okay. That's good, but you're really not. <laughs> <laughs> I love saying that and, to people, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah really that's, not. That's so much. Yeah, but it's great. It's great because I think, as I said, I mean, I think uh, the more one comes to know oneself and self aware, you can develop self awareness. I think it opens so many doors for you. And to me, honestly, it's the greatest inhibitor of uh 
of progress and success for people is lack of self-awareness. So I think anything that helps shine a light on it is fantastic. Absolutely. I think, you know, once you get to a certain level of success in your foundational work and stuff on your business, everything else is your mindset. It's how you Mm -hmm. see yourself, how you project yourself, what you think you're capable of. All of that becomes the work. (laughs) That's the real work. And the funny thing, even even if you become successful, it doesn't mean you immediately recognize that because we can be very, we can often be unconsciously competent. Oh, absolutely. I think that that's, you know, most of us. <laughs> Myself included, <laughs> well, did, okay? <laughs> yeah, I know. I love when people say, uh, so how do you do what you do? And you go, oh, my, that's the worst question to ask me because I don't really know. <laughs> Just do That's it. when you get very creative with your, you yeah. know, I say to people all the time, I'm making this up. And I don't mean <laughs> that in a sense of it's coming from nowhere. Yeah. I'm reading the energy. I'm seeing who you are. I'm looking at what words fall out of your mouth. And it's telling me a whole lot because communication is actually only 7% words, which kind of, bums me out since I do a lot of writing for my clients. <laughs> I teach them how to write hooks and, you know, get attention and write emails that people open and things like that. And, and I'm like, well, you know, it's really your energy and your uh-huh. body language and how you make another person feel is the most powerful thing. You know, sales as well as um, any marketing, any type of branding, messaging, it's all about how you make the other person feel mm-hmm. about themselves. What about when you uh, work with uh, or people who think they're disruptors and, uh, you know, help because I think disruptors, sometimes like you get great disruptors, like creative disruptors, and you need them. And then you get people who think that they're disruptors and they're just <laughs> distracting and destructive <laughs> they're obnoxious <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly. i'll just say it and, they're really obnoxious yeah. <laughs> and they're just more like you know um extroverted personality styles on steroids right <laughs> trying to get attention but you know what happens is for me i meet these people all the time because i work with speakers authors coaches these types of people who are in the limelight a lot of times and I can, when I see that and they're talking about, I'm going to be transparent and I'm going to be authentic. They're using all the right words and they're doing it in all the wrong ways. (laughs) Because as human beings, we have an incredible BS meter that's already built in, right? So we can see it immediately. That's not in alignment. This person who's saying, now I'm going to be transparent with you is so polished or they cry on a dime, yeah. they're crying at the right yeah. point in the sales conversation. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's like, okay, we're not sure what it is, but there's something wrong here, right? It's just, it's kind of something exactly. not happening. So when I work with those guys, I really try to bring them in, in and ground it. You know, because yeah. nobody, everybody likes to buy. They just don't want to be sold to. Yeah, yeah. No, I love what you just said there about the, uh, when people say, like, I'm, I'm going to be completely transparent. I mean, when somebody says that to me, I immediately think, okay, what are you hiding? Yes. I mean, <laughs> your psychology goes off, yeah. right? Immediately. Yeah, because you're saying, because you're saying, why did you need to say that? So, you know, in my mind, I'm saying, why did you need to bring that up? There's a reason. <laughs> right, exactly. And I think your mind is like all of ours. We, we all have that same response when I say, well, truthfully, yeah. <laughs> you're like, well, exactly. what were you telling me before truthfully? Was that <laughs> made, yeah, in all know? honesty. <laughs> right. That in all yeah. honesty. Or let me be candid with you. I love those <laughs> little points of yeah. connection that people use that actually are um, setting off your alarm system. <laughs> I don't know. Let me be candid with you. Okay, so you've been, uh, you know, you've been less now, than candid with me. Right. Yes. Up until now, yeah, you're, really just, been to... you're not telling me the real deal, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I think it's and a then, great and question. Then, and then the 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 innovators, right? Because the the innovators, uh, 
can often be, I mean, and you know this better than me, but a strange combination, right? You know, slightly disruptive, yes. you know, but also, um, you know, oftentimes, you know, it's quite a frustrating road, you know, to be an innovator. Yeah, because innovators are the dreamers. They're the ones that see the future and want to bring it into the present, right? So they're what I call the real visionaries in a sense of, mm -hmm. we all visionaries to a degree, right? Just like we're all creative, we're all rebels, we're all all the stuff, but the innovators are people that really enroll other people in these ideas that are, they're just really creative and they're full of possibility. Not like the disruptor doesn't do that as well. They're very closely aligned. Mm -hmm. But if you think about it, if you think about like Elon Musk and Steve Jobs, Elon is much more of a disruptor in the way that he approaches things, how he talks right. about it, what he's doing. Steve was more like, let me show you, I got this idea. I put all these, I'm gonna pull this out of my pocket in a moment and I'm gonna show you that you can put all your songs on this little box. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Elon's like, fuck it, I'm putting cars on Mars, dude. It's like, that's yeah, exactly. You know, it's very <laughs> different energetic. The guys, well, both of them are visionaries, right? But right. they have a different flavor. And so when I'm working with people, we're looking at what's your, What's your real flavor that you naturally exude without doing anything, without a put on or trying? You just, you're channeling it almost, right? It's just because you're that way that you do it naturally. Mm -hmm. And how can we enhance that and then put the visuals and the, like the branding visuals and all those characteristics and the words so that your people are like, that's my guy, yeah. or that's my gal, that's who I want to be with. And uh, yeah. that's really the difference between the two. Yeah. One is- and, and then, go ahead. Well, I was gonna say the, the uh, disruptors have a little more edge of probably, you know, don't tell me no, or if you say right. no, that's what I'm gonna do, where the, <laughs> the innovators are more um, understated. And they're more, uh, they're just looking at all the dreamy possibilities that could actually happen. Uh, and then with the with the geeks, I mean, we all love geeks because we we want to know that there are experts and there are people who really go down into the nitty gritty and can do all of it. But we sometimes don't want them to be the ones who sort of design the experience because, mm -hmm. I mean, their, their problem often is connecting with the rest of us. Well, they overthink. That's their biggest problem. <laughs> They're thinkers, right? They're very analytical, mostly very practical. And they, they think, I just got off the phone with a, with a geek who was like, I want to dream bigger. I want to use my, my innovation characteristics, right? And I was like, great, you know, because you, you're a four as a geek and you're a three as innovator. So it's not that far apart. Uh, but I think with geeks, you know, they're usually quirky. They're a little bit different, but they're also, I love them because they have that roadmap to results. Like, you know, it's all worked out, at least on the map. <laughs> yeah. I mean, real life doesn't work that way, right? There's always some yeah. breakdown or something happening. But at least at the beginning, you're feeling like I have a plan. I have a way of getting there or this person is so good at technology. If I'm in trouble or if I need something, I'm going to call them. They're going to be my person. And, um, you know, personally love the geeks because I'm always in trouble. Right. And there's always something breaking down in my business. <laughs> <laughs> I think they call that success, but I'm not quite sure. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Hey, just call it disrupting your own business. There you it's go. like, <laughs> But uh, each, um, each one of them is really a fantastic uh, archetype to uh, align with. 
Yeah, and and what I hope what uh, people watching and listening take away from this is uh, where we started out the conversation is that, look, you may not think that you have something that's very marketable or whatever, but when you go and you know you do an assessment with uh, Anne or work with somebody like Anne, you can discover that yeah, everybody does. It's just a question of of discovering it, understanding it, and then learning how to make it work for you. Yeah, you want to learn how to make that the the entry point that people are attracted to. When you can do that, then you're very comfortable in your own skin. You're not trying mm -hmm. to be somebody else. Like we were talking about, what do you do with, with people who think they're disruptors when they're actually nurturers, right? Because they're very, those are like two opposite types of energy, right? And it's, it's so important because we, we think that communication, like I was saying before, we think that communication is all the stuff that we say. And, you know, oh, here's a cool picture of me or whatever. Mm -hmm. It's like, like a, one of my clients recently showed me some, we're going to be doing a rebrand on her business. She's super successful. Um, she builds teams of people that do, um, they, they're salespeople that they're selling insurance and things like that but she's teaching them how to actually be human, <laughs> if you will. You know what I mean? Like nobody likes yeah. like an uh, insurance salesman. You know what I mean? It's like, sorry, we just, we're just like a little suspicious. Do I really yeah. need this or not? You know, but so she's teaching them really the, the art of relationship. And I think what we were touching upon with, with the, whole, yeah. the whole situation that we've all come through, we are traumatized. As, yep. as a group, as a world, actually, we're all together in this. We're extremely traumatized and super sensitive. And mm -hmm. it's important that we treat each other and be with each other in ways that I believe are healing, which is really A, being yourself and B, being open yeah. to people yeah. and however it is they are. Because, you know, we're all our nervous systems are completely whacked out. So yeah. <laughs> I don't know about yeah. you. That would be speaking about yeah. myself. <laughs> no, no, I agree. I mean, I think uh, the, the thing is, yes, we've been through, we've been through probably the, I, I think the first global collective experience because you can look back at world wars and that but they didn't actually affect the whole planet you know they're misnomers in many ways because mm -hmm. world war ii didn't affect south america at all and other parts but this is the first collective experience uh, that everybody's been through so yeah I, I totally agree with you and i think that's where the i think that's where the authenticity really comes in is is if people to be themselves and then as you said to to be sensitive to other people and, and just uh and i think the other thing too is i always say is like start start locally as in start with this start with the the ecosystem that surrounds you rather than mm -hmm. focusing out on big global issues like try and try and be the best you can within the ecosystem around you yeah i think that's really really great advice um i remember early on i heard I love this, that you can make six figures within a mile of your house. Yeah. Then your community or where you live and the people that you know and all of that start there. And even when you get big and go global, you want to act like you're local. Yeah. yeah to maintain that, that sense of rapport and that sense of intimacy with people. So it's we are no longer really um, intrigued with the big, 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 big stuff. And even being from, you know, the good old USA where everything's like bigger is better, <laughs> more is best, that kind of thing. We're really, we've really changed over this past year to really, really dig into the things we care about. And when you yeah. think about it, ultimately, it's relationships, your family, yeah. your spouses, the people that you love, your kids. Those are the things that you ultimately care about. When if somebody came to your house and they were going to rob you, it's going to be like, take my, you know, furniture. 
probably be the first thing, the objects, take my car, take my furniture, uh, leave my life, you know, yeah. and then later it's yeah. going to be, you know, it's the last thing you want to go is the relationships. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I think it's great. And I think, uh, and I think actually in, if you're looking for a silver lining, I think a lot of people got reintroduced to their families during this because, mm -hmm. uh, you know, especially people who were commuting long hours, working long hours, traveling, being away and all of that kind of stuff. I think uh, so. I think there's a silver lining there where they realize that actually, yeah, they, the relationships matter most. Yeah. And they're like, oh, I'm married to you. <laughs> hopefully yeah. hopefully it was a good i married to you yeah yeah exactly <laughs> right and not, same words and different on, tone <laughs> yeah and then and then not who are these little people who are right. running around the house this making a mess little, who are they yeah. <laughs> who are these kids and what are they up to yeah i think you know it's i believe like as you do john that it's really brought mm. us together yeah it's brought us so. more together and that people yeah. have become more patient and I'm not, yeah. that's not a word I use very often because I'm not that patient. I'm kind of an <laughs> action, action girl. But, you know, yeah, yeah. there's a patience that people have gotten and a little more acceptance of. Yeah, no, I would agree with you. And being Irish, like patience isn't one of our national it's traits. It's not our things, honest. man. I don't, my father's <laughs> English and Irish. We go off at 60 seconds to flash. <laughs> explosion so, right exactly so listen and this has been fantastic i love it uh the i love like uh finding your renegade brand archetype uh i would really uh encourage you to check out Anne's work all of her uh links will be below this video but before we go on just quickly tell people a little bit more about yourself and what you do well i'd say you know what you need to know about me is that i've lived a pretty long pretty crazy life and uh, I worked a lot in magazine art direction. So I'm really an expert at putting a story together, telling a story and keeping attention in page flipping. I worked from popular mechanics to Vogue and everything in between. So I'm, I'm, a, I'm a very much of a chameleon in the sense of how I approach my clients and what I do. And I don't do anything that's cookie cutter. There isn't right. one size fits all or one way to do something. So when you're looking at what you want to do, I believe the best thing to do is go inside and really see what do you like or what would you be willing to do? <laughs> it's always, what am I willing to do to make this thing work, right? For some of us, it's spreadsheets and podcasting and other, you know, and for other people, it's like, I just want to, be one on one with people in networking or on the stage or whatever. You know, everyone has a, everyone really has that, if I could say it, the G spot. They have that good spot where they belong and it's obvious. So look for whatever yours is. Yeah, and I love it. I just finished the quote from your website because I love it. It's not that you're not techy enough, not pretty enough, not smart enough. The big freaking problem is you are not you enough. Love it. That's fantastic. <laughs> Thank you, John. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, listen, thanks, Anne. Thank you for watching and listening. And I will see you all again soon. Thank you. Thanks so much.